it starts with the photocopier. As an English major, you know, I started to look at art history and had audited a, a class that made me think that I, I could enjoy writing about art. And uh, I was meeting some, some people at the time who were using the photocopier as an artist tool. So I started to experiment myself. And the idea that somebody like me, untrained as an artist, could start making prints that looked finished um, right out of the machine sort of started me on a path of thinking that actually I could make stuff that was interesting to me. As I came across the history of photography, I started to read about the camera obscura, which is a, like a camera, but it doesn't record the, the image that is projected through a, either a pinhole or a lens. And what it does is recalibrate the values so that the, the act of watching something is of the most importance. In relation to the project here at Wheaton is the fact that even the, the word kaleidoscope can mean I am looking at something beautiful. I love the fact that even the word itself doesn't refer to the object, but the that sort of fascination of, of the visual. When Brewster, David Brewster, the Scottish inventor, first developed the idea of the kaleidoscope, which he took from a Ptolemy, but Brewster took his optical studies and sort of elaborated it, and he discovered that a, a, a perfect circle can be constructed by the, the multiple um, reflections that you get in two opposed mirrors. So he ended up developing a, an invention that became a, a kind of obsession with uh, uh, England at that time, and there are funny cartoons. Some of them are in the, in the case of people walking around with their, looking at their kaleidoscopes and bumping into things on the street. When Julie approached me about doing something here, I was struck by the vast number of small, fragile, precious objects here. And it aggravated in me this sort of impulse not to make objects or add more objects to a world already glutted with them, and especially a museum like this one, which is just sort of packed with, with beautiful, lovely little things that are gorgeous in and of themselves, but when they, they are encountered en masse, appreciation begins to switch to, I call it the bull in the china shop impulse, like this sort of desire to start smashing things. So that got uh, connected with an awareness of the Cullet farm, I'm gonna call it, the acres of 50 gallon containers full of waste glass that are out there uh, behind the studio, just like, looking like this stuff, like jewels. If you came across one of these things lying on a street in Philadelphia, you would think it was something incredibly special. The, the idea that we're just taking the stuff that, even here, you can have so many different feelings about it. Uh, something like a, a drinking glass that, I mean, really has no chance of ever serving anyone again. It has a sort of second life, even if it's just aesthetic in, in this machine. So to some extent, it, it's producing an, uh, an image that resembles the precious objects that are here, but invites people to look at their destruction at the same time. When you s see the, the colors, especially the uh, that we associate with stained glass, uh, it starts to look like a, a rose window in a cathedral, but it's it's sort of melting and changing. It has a sort of liquid architecture. I mean, the other thing that is really interesting is that this is very much about gravity. Um, even when the, the machine is turning very, very slowly, every once in a while, something will, gravity will grab something and, and just pull it down very quickly, very, you know, contrary to the sort of slow motion of the, of the machine. And my first thought was to laugh because it was just so funny to hear the sound of, of glass breaking in a place like this. The, the way that Wheaton and, and the staff here has trusted this uh, impulse um, or this little kind of Im imaginary um, uh, vision of turning this stuff into a kaleidoscope has been really uh, exciting for, for me. And I think it's, it's been really fun watching people enjoy the process too because this, this is a room inside this museum and it's become a studio. I mean, look, look at this mess we've made here. <laughs>